Hey everybody, I'm here to review the experience of drinking a Fireball whiskey drink called Christmas in Your Mouth while playing the video game Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I thought this sounded like a perfect combination. Who didn't get excited when they got Mario Brothers for Christmas when they opened that box, opened their new NES, and this game came with it? And I'm hoping that this drink will help me relive that experience by creating the sense of Christmas in my mouth. This drink comes directly from the Fireball Whiskey Company. This is from their YouTube page. I will uh, go ahead and put a link to their channel uh, in this video in particular down below in the description if you'd like to check it out. I'm interested. There's cranberry, Fireball Whiskey, and vanilla vodka in here. And if I learned anything from my last Cranberry Nintendo experience, sometimes this can be surprising. Let's find out. Isn't it just like Nintendo, the company that gave you a copy of Tetris with your first Game Boy, to give you a cartridge with two of the best games that ever came out for the Nintendo Entertainment System on one cartridge when you got the system. Uh, how times have changed. But I remember this game so well. I've played it so many times. But you'll notice that I continue to try every pipe and hit every block and just run around aimlessly as though it's my first time playing. But that's kind of the fun of Mario, is jumping around aimlessly, hunting for things that you haven't found before and finding new things. Something I'll be finding new today is the Fireball Whiskey Drink from FireballWhiskey.com. Mm. And it's uh, surprising. They call it Christmas in the Mouth. And I can see where that analogy came from. It's not like Christmas per se, but it's like the things you might expect to eat on Christmas. It tastes like pie. It tastes specifically like pie with that crumbly crust on top. You know, the crust that's really just brown sugar, maybe some oats in there or something. I don't know. It's usually almost burnt and crunchy, crispy, but it's so delicious. And because of the vanilla vodka that's in there, it gives you the illusion of an a la mode slice of pie. But right off the bat, I strongly recommend trying this drink. It's really quite tasty. If you're a whiskey drinker and you tend to drink mixed drinks with whiskey in them, you might be a little disappointed that the whiskey doesn't take uh, front seat in this drink. This drink is an easy drinker and it's more about the sweetness, the vanilla, and that warmth, not hot, the warmth that comes from the cinnamon in the background. Now, in the game I've already gotten the first Fire Flower. I wonder if the Fire Flower tastes something like this. Does Mario eat the flower? Is that how he gets the fireball? Or does he just, uh, you know, like land on it and it somehow absorbs into his skin? It's like poison ivy in the rash he gets makes him shoot fireballs. I don't know, I'd like to think that he's eating it though, and I really would like to think it tastes like this, because this is just top notch. And the nice thing about Mario is if you're not hunting for points, uh, you get plenty of time in the game. I know it's a timed game, and I don't know what measurement the time is in. Those definitely aren't seconds. I've always wondered that. That, that clock moves very quickly. Uh, there's some relativity going on here that I'm not quite aware of. Maybe it's in line with the excessively floaty yet grabby gravity that exists in this Mario title. I'm not taking the warp pipes. That was on purpose. I know where the warp pipe is. I just don't like skipping it. I like seeing the game and enjoying this drink and going into the second castle. I'd like to find Bowser and preferably be taking my last sip as I'm defeating Bowser for the first time. 
I feel that would be very satisfying, both from the quality of this drink and just the quality of the game. Now one of the tricks in Mario, uh, I've gotten much further in the game, I have gotten later in the game, and I've found that you start seeing less and less fire flowers. So an obvious suggestion that I have is when you get a fire flower, keep it. Really, really try to keep it. Remember that you don't have to kill everything. I know sometimes I try to. You don't have to collect every coin, although it helps if you can get lives. You'll need them. But if you can, for the most part, avoid enemies that might be causing you trouble or might possibly run into you, just, just run right by them. There's the infamous flying fish stage, which honestly I recommend. I've seen people try to go for that full force. Just run through it. Get through it. All right, I've got 92 coins, three lives. First fight with Bowser. Let's watch this fire spin around and take a sip. Now, what's also interesting is that I've read that these... Uh, little fire spinnies um, came originally from the uh, graphics that were being created for The Legend of Zelda and they decided that this was not a fit for The Legend of Zelda so they just happened to have it around they plugged it into Mario to make it a little bit more difficult. They definitely achieved that goal but they created some continuity in Nintendo titles. Ah, missed that. But also in drinks that fit well, the Red Potion and the Fireball Cinnamon Christmas in Your Mouth drink both sit well with Cranberry and both fit well with Nintendo games. My Princess is hiding in another castle. I still have about a quarter of the drink left. Let's see if we'll find her. All signs point to no. But it's worth a try. That's what Mario thinks. Mario thinks if he just keeps trying, if he just keeps stomping on these Goombas that just happen to be walking slowly by, just like these turtles. They're not really coming for me. See, I'll hop down here. Not even interested. Hop right over them. They only turn around because the wall's there. They're not even trying to attack me. I'm just running through and killing everything indiscriminately. This is like running through a forest and just punching trees and finding small animals and kicking them, kicking chipmunks and throwing fire. Nothing's really trying to hurt you. That's the interesting thing about this game. Now Bowser is trying to hurt you though and Bowser is trying to fight back with fire. Fire versus fire with fireball to boot. I don't know what Bowser's goal is. What is Bowser trying to do with the princess? He just likes keeping her locked up. Uh, seeing as there are different species, I think the other conclusions are unlikely at best, or at least unlikely to lead to anything productive. But the game pauses at the end to play some beautiful music and you get the fireworks. If you land on the right number, that's associated with the numbers that you land on at the end. Look it up. I don't know it offhand, but there's something to that. And there's also something to this drink. I've slowed down my sipping. It's still cold from the shaker, but it's starting to warm up. And if I'm going to add any suggestions to this combination, it would be to drink the drink quickly. Get it while it's cold. And hot. Another trick that I'll give for Mario is actually specific to these types of levels. The blooper, which is the squid, yet another uh, Nintendo game where nothing is what it is. Cheap cheeps are fish. Blooper is the squid. But I'll give you this tip and you'll notice that I just didn't follow it right there. Also not following my hang on to the fireball tip from earlier. But the tip is to stay at the bottom. When you see those guys, they actually never touch the bottom. And if you have one coming for you and you'd like to avoid it, at least give it enough time to get past you and give you some room. 
Just drop down to the bottom and it can't hit you there. It just can't. I usually duck just to be sure, if, especially if I'm big Mario. Little Mario can't duck. Spine's too short. He's just tiny and very fast swimmer though and high jumper. See, that's another thing I never understood about these games, is that you seem to jump higher as Little Mario and lower as Big Mario. That must have something to do with his gaining of weight, but apparently he's not gaining any muscle when he grows bigger. It's just like, um, you know, 40 pounds of fat he suddenly adds on. He eats that mushroom and it's just loaded. That mushroom is loaded with calories. That's how he grows so quickly and can't jump so high. Oh, here's the fish level referring to earlier. Try for coins, don't, don't get them all. This isn't Pokemon, you don't need to catch them all. Also, that's a mushroom right there, but I hardly ever get it because usually when I get it, it's gone right away because there's a fish that likes to jump right there in your face while you're picking it up. Just like that fish that jumped right in my face when I narrowly avoided him. Jumping up to the flag. There's always some skill associated with that, depending on how much running you can do before you get to the top. And I have about a sip left. So if I make it to Bowser number two, who is also a fake Bowser, I didn't mention that on the first one, but if you weren't aware of this, the Bowsers that you fight before the last Bowser on the eighth level are all fake. They're just guys in suits, uh, Goombas in suits, or Koopa Troopas, or some other Mario baddie dressed up as Koopa, King Koopa, and started spitting fireballs at you. So if it is a suit, it makes me wonder how they're getting those fireballs to shoot out. There must be some type of a flamethrower inside the suit that they're using. Pretty good Bowser cosplay though. I wouldn't have guessed. So I just try to run under him. He jumps a lot, and if you get hit, just go. And get him that way. The only other way to get him is to just throw fireballs at him. A la fireball. And my last sip, and our princess is in another castle. Ah, so many other castles with only one princess to find. And it's not this castle, which is a pretty big castle, and uh, apparently no one lives there. It's just a toad. A toad who's actually a mushroom-headed uh, freak who lives in an enormous castle by himself just to do nothing but wait for Mario to arrive and tell you that the princess lives in another castle. You'd think that Mario would have visited this land before and he would know where the princess lives. I don't know. Or he would know where Bowser is. Maybe. I don't know. Well, everyone, this has been fun. I'm going to take my last sip of Fireball and say that it finishes off smooth. This is a great combination. Out of any of the ones that I've tried so far, this is the one that I think I really recommend. Especially if you haven't tried Mario. Try Mario, uh, the original. It's a great game. It's a lot of fun. But if you haven't tried this drink, which I think is probably more likely if you found this video and you're watching it, definitely try this drink. It is fantastic. An excellent use for Fireball Whiskey. I'll link to it below, again, in the description if you'd like to see how to make it. Enjoy!